Hey, how you do, people? Uh, what's going on? Uh, it's 7.20 a.m. in, uh, Vancouver. Uh, it is New Year's Day. And, I'm not gonna lie, uh, my New Year is just kinda lame. Um, didn't have much to do. Um, no women around, that's for sure. Uh... You know, it's one of those things. Um, anyway, um, it could have been worse. Um, you know, uh, I do have my advantages. But anyway, um, not what I wanted to talk about here. Um, there are a lot of concepts uh, I wanted to go through. And sometimes the best way of explaining things is through metaphorical and caricature types of uh, expression and uh, I have mentioned that before and I have also mentioned uh, uh, civilian occupation forces uh, essentially it's a group of people from another country that show up into your country and take over through economic means. They take the good jobs, um, they keep it amongst themselves, the money goes out of the country, back to their country, and they do nothing to um, benefit society. They may mask it by doing civil servant type jobs, uh, but in reality, they're not doing the economy of whatever country you're from any good at all. And that's very much the same thing in Canada. And, you know, there's a multitude of reasoning behind this. The, um, nice way of putting a reason is multiculturals. Everybody has uh, the right to live a good life, yada, 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 and this all sounds good and well, but it's actually not the predominant reason why multiculturalism happens. Um, you know, treating your fellow man with respect, as I said, and all that kind of stuff. But those aren't the reasons. It's nothing uh, honorable. Uh, it may mask itself as being honorable, which is why I despise people who are sanctimonious. That is when they pretend to be a good person, but really they're just a sack of shit. And there's a lot of people like that. And you know, there are a lot of people who are just trying to get by uh, through their day-to-day -day lives. And uh, I don't have any respect for them either. It's all about themselves and they don't want to do anything and they're not going to stick their neck out for anybody. It's all good and well, but I ain't going to do anything for you. Um, so, you know, there's those things to take into consideration. Um, and then you go, well, what other reasons are there for multiculturalism? We're forgetting about the rhetoric, the propaganda of how it's the right thing to do and this, that, and the other, because we know that's the mask for what it really is um and it's you know it's corrupt evil reasoning uh there's no secret that the western powers exploited cheap labor from asia it's no secret that the american army um uh, although arguably was not the most brutal uh, in places like Vietnam and Korea, um, and even even the atomic bombs in Japan, you know, there are people who actually question that, why they do, I don't care, but they do, for some reason. Uh, and I say arguably in places like Vietnam and North Korea, because, uh, to be honest with you, their leadership was quite savage themselves. Um, However, that would not be good propaganda, especially for multiculturalism. However, excluding those things from the, uh, the, the conversation is moronic. It's oversimplifying a problem. And, you know, in certain senses, I don't have a problem with multiculturalism. 
I have a problem on how it is that it's presented. It is all meant to be secretive. Nobody's to know anything. It's confusion civilization. And, you know, you figure, you know, I ain't doing too bad. Uh, things are going well for me here and there. I should be a little higher up on the uh, echelon of society, but I'm not. And I still have to put up with people talking to me like dirt. And I go, why are these people talking to me like dirt? Because I certainly don't think they're more intelligent than me. And that's not me boasting. That's me pointing out that they're fucking idiots. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people who watch the news and go, this news is fucking terrible. It's fucking not insightful at all. And they just repeat the same stories over and over again. They might change a thing here or there, but essentially it's the same fucking story. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah, well, there, there's some nasty reasons behind multiculturalism, and we really feel the brunt of it here in Vancouver, I gotta tell you. Um, it's not multiculturalism. It isn't. All the immigrants are from Hong Kong. Uh, for the most part, you get some from India, you get some from here and there, but for the most part, they all come from Hong Kong. That's not multiculturalism. That's another uh, country uh, showing up and being a civilian occupation force. I don't care what they mask it as. That is what it really is. And there are reasons for it. There are the undetectable nuclear submarines. Don't know who has access to them, what their motives are, what country they represent, um, and at what given time, because, you know, quite often people switch sides, sell information to other people, steal other information for other people, you know, this, that, and the other. There's a whole bunch of things that could be fucking going on. And in reality, it isn't that many people doing it. It's, you know, a very, very small group of people because most people are peons. They're worker bees or they're soldier ants. They don't fucking make decisions. And the people who make decisions aren't particularly intelligent. I mean, you know, I'm not the first person on the Internet to say that. That's for damn sure. But I am the first person, as far as I know, to say it in this direction. I mean, if you want to call um, uh, authority figures stupid, 99 out of 100 people will point to Donald Trump. And, you know, you get people who know better, but will still go along with that simply because they want to keep their head down, they want to stay out of society's way, and they want to go about their business and essentially do nothing for anybody. So, you know... Fuck you. Uh, you don't want to be helpful. You're part of the problem. Uh, because you're basically saying, well, if something shitty happens to someone else, it's better than me. And it's like, well, I prefer that, you know, shitty things don't happen to people. And, you know, I might be in a position to help them. And it wouldn't be too difficult. You don't really have to stick your neck out to, to help people. But, you know, some people are just so paranoid in their own fucking shadow that uh, they, they don't know that. And they don't care, really. When it comes down to it, they don't really care. I mean, me, I'm going to be honest, it's more spiting my enemies than helping people. But, you know, I'm honest about it. I'm not, I'm not a sanctimonious cunt. Um, and, yeah, anyway. Um, Countdown to Zero. Okay. Great documentary. I watched it. Uh, there was one particular segment in it that uh, I thought was important, and it's something that uh, a lot of people, they don't understand that concept. They made a point of saying Osama bin Laden, he did a mathematical calculation of all of the Muslim Arabs and all that sort of stuff that had been killed by Western powers. Uh, they always say America on television. It's... It's, it's the Western powers. It's, they don't like any of us. And they labeled it as 4 million people that uh, they figure should, should get it because of uh, past uh, supposed wrongdoings of the Western powers against the Arab world. Well, that'd be all good and well as Osama bin Laden, you know, he's 
probably dead, but uh, you know, nothing was certain. They would have rather have taken him alive. And, and remember, as nasty a person as he was, he was a poster boy. Poster boy. Uh, there are other figures who are more powerful than him in the Arab world, uh, who we despise, who are capable of hiding a lot better and are worth a lot more money. And some of them don't have to hide. They have so much protection that they, they don't have to hide. In that sense. I mean, Osama bin Laden was taking a shit in a fucking, like a bucket, in a cave. So, you know, he wasn't exactly wealthy in that sense. Uh, but there are other places in the world where there are leaders who have similar mindsets. And in the Asian world, they view, or well, their leadership views, all Asians as originating from the area which is China, which is the dominant power in the in the region. So it doesn't matter if they're Japanese, Taiwanese, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesian, Singapore, Hong Kong, doesn't matter. They're all Chinese, they're all part of the Chinese Empire. Uh, it's much like the Persians, how they just acquire them. Except they had a problem. White men showed up, white men said, fuck you, and you know, pulled their pants down, particularly in the opium wars, and embarrassed them in front of the whole world. Uh, and they didn't forget that, and they didn't forget that either. Um, and it is true, like, in North Korea, millions of Asian people were killed. It was a war that was going to happen. There was no, no getting around it. Vietnam, another war was going to happen. A lot of people say, oh, we had no business going there, blah, blah, blah. Shut up. Your oversimplistic view of the world is inaccurate. And because you don't want to hear things that um, are nasty and unpleasant about the world, doesn't mean that they don't happen and that they don't exist. Um, the Americans um, in Vietnam were particularly efficient at killing NVA soldiers. Now, Viet Cong, they hit a bit better, they used sleazier tactics. Uh, there was a Geneva Convention uh, and all that sort of stuff. International body, you know, regulating the war, stopping the American army from essentially doing their job properly. Uh, a lot of regulations and red tape and contradictory opinions. And, you know, that could have spelt even worse news for, you know, um, the American army and to a lesser extent the South Korean army or South Vietnamese army. Um, in the sense that, you know, lesser extent because, you know, obviously there were diehard uh, South Vietnamese who did not want the communists taken over. Uh, but there were plenty of you know, pretend South Vietnamese army who wanted the North Vietnamese to take over the Communist Party because it was easy. It's based on race. Uh, they didn't want the white man there, even though they would be a lot better off if they were there. Uh, but the statistics uh, are not exactly accurate, I don't believe. They say about 66,000 Americans lost their lives in Vietnam. And they say it's in the millions with uh, the Vietnamese. That's probably true. In Vietnam, probably millions of Vietnamese were, were killed. Uh, Americans? You know, um, that is open to debate. Uh, those figures, they could get distorted, misplaced, moved around. Uh, a lot of the soldiers became homeless, uh, which is actually an advantage in some senses. You, you kind of you blip off the radar, you disappear, no one comes looking for you 20 years later. That, that did happen a few times, but that didn't make the news. Um, yeah, when, you know, certain stupid fucking people say, well, let's let the door open to these people and not really do a thorough background check, because that's a lot of work. Uh, well, yeah, you let in a few bad apples and look what happened. Um, 
because they use that argument against the Americans. Whenever the Americans do bad things uh, and the government comes out and says it's a few bad apples, you get all the critics saying, oh, you always say that, and blah, 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 we think it's organized, blah, blah, blah. But if it's in the reverse situation, and you take the caravan, for example, and things like that, and there are bad people in there, of course there are, and how this influx of Southeast Asians have gone into places like Australia, into the United States in certain circumstances, and have committed crimes, that, that has happened, and it's like, but you did good because you allowed them in. And what's your explanation going to be? Oh, it was a few bad apples. So, excuse me, you're a fucking halfwit. That's f like, they won't have another excuse for why they commit crimes. They'll, just, they'll simply say that. And that was the argument they supposedly debunked. And they're using the same argument to defend a different cause. So you can understand the hypocrisy and the moronic nature of of the discussion that they're having. And the problem is, um, yeah, yeah, get, getting back to the Western powers and exploiting uh, slave labor in Asia, they needed white people to go over there and oversee the factories and things like that. This I've made mention before in a few videos. Um, uh, going to places like that, you're, it's very claustrophobic. You may not feel it, you may not sense it, you may not know it, but it is. Um, uh, individuals with money and power can go to places like that, and they're there as the proxy. They're there to oversee factories usually and this that and the other but they have political strings because obviously they got self-preservation in their in their mindset and you know it's not an easy job going over there and explaining to people look we're giving you a shit job and you're gonna like it and you know the political atmosphere isn't gonna change i mean you'll be dealing with people that don't like you and that's where you are, is on their home turf. And, uh, yeah, there have been many a time where, you know, they've decided, well, we're just going to get rid of this white guy and we're not going to tell uh, his business associates back in the States. And, you know, simply, it's like they always try to portray uh, America as the three ring circus. Uh, in politics, on the television, things like that. Uh, yeah, in Asia, it's a lot worse. But you don't actually hear that much of Asian politics over here, which is why I really like China Uncensored, hosted by Chris Chappell. Very insightful man, and he gives as good an explanation as he can because it's a very confusing society on the way how to do things. Confusion civilization. And, um, you know... There are things like, we don't know how many POW Vietnam uh, veterans there there are. We don't know. Because uh, the uh, Vietnamese communist government, you know, communist, I say loosely, uh, which was, you know, essentially controlled by the Chinese, uh, certain parts of China. China's a divided country. Um, they could have grabbed... 10,000 American Viet, uh, Vietnam veterans uh, during that war. And they probably would never have given them up. I mean, I know a lot of POWs did make it home, but uh, what if that's just a fraction of how many there there really were? And they, you know, they put them in sub some subterranean uh, POW camp where they were never to be seen again. Uh, where they became the guinea pigs for experimentation and the horrible things that happened to them. But they were kept alive because they're a bargaining chip. Once they're dead, they're dead. Their, their, their value decreases to nothing because, you know, there's nothing more to be done. 
I mean, there are, obviously there are the insults that uh, they can go with that. But uh, as far as their bargaining chip power, they lose it. And, uh, you know, some people go, 10,000 soldiers, that's outrageous. Uh, it most certainly is, but, you know, World War II standards where they were grabbing hundreds of thousands, the Germans were grabbing hundreds of thousands of prisoners. Uh, 10,000 sounds quite modest, actually. Uh, not that I'm, you know, saying it's a good thing. I'm saying it's, uh, it's comparatively speaking, it's very comparable that that could have happened. And with the help of, you know, uh, PLA, Chinese Army, uh, soldiers uh, catching a, you know, uh, a division regiment, however many people, you know, I, I throw the 10,000 men figure out there as a figure. It could be anything. And, you know, all video recorded what they did to them, documented, spread around the world in secret societies. It's got a demoralizing effect. I don't, I don't care if there are people out there that do not like the American army, don't like that they went to Vietnam, uh, say, well, anything that happened to them, they put on a uniform, they took that risk, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? On a video camera, that happening to any white guy, despite who they are, is bad for all white people. If they deserve to be punished, it should be by Western power authority figures, not the enemy. The enemy doesn't get to decide. I don't, is this whole sovereign nation bullshit? Fuck you. Fuck you and your fucking opinions. They are developing weapons and psychological warfare to take over. Therefore, your opinion counts for shit. You get guys like Jason Umru. Fucking sellout cocksucker. Fucking despicable human being. And, you know, a lot of people like him. And I go, well, I don't see why anyone should like him. He's accepted the inevitable that the, the planet needs to be shared, blah, 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 this, right, and the other. Making him the sanctimonious cunt that he is. Well, disguising, masking, and pretending it doesn't exist, and enabling it to continue the evil things that go wrong in the world. These are all concepts he knows, but he won't say them because he's watching out for his own bacon, his own big fat ass. And, you know, guys like him, fuck him. He's a bastard. Anyway, metaphorically speaking, um, as I mentioned, metaphors and caricatures and whatnot, um... It's a particularly disgusting thing, and it's an infuriating subject. Uh, but there are plenty of white people who actually like going to these places, despite all the horrible things. And that's because they grew up in a culture where it was acceptable to think that way, and they were conditioned to think that way. Oh, travel to Vietnam, travel to Indonesia, travel to Singapore. These are great, wonderful places. You like the warm weather. Look at the beaches and this, that, and the other. Never mind the hideous, dark fucking terror of a government that they have. Forget about that. Don't even think about it. You're a good person. Nothing will happen to you. Uh, except you got white skin and you got uh, something of value to you because of that. I mean, they abuse the fuck out of their own people for no particular reasons. Uh, no reason they ain't gonna do it to you. And, and then, and then our government comes along, and you know, basically they go, "Oh, don't do that." And you know, if you're lucky, we'll get back to you in a few years. If they start deciding they want to pimp you out or throw you in a prison for no particular reason, or whatever, because you know, people do do things out of frustration, and you know, all those countries are poor as shit, so there's no reason. They're not going to, you know, cherry pick and decide we're going to fuck these people over and for no particular reason, just because we're frustrated about other things. Because they look at us and go, we come from a spoiled country and we're given too much stuff. Uh, we have too many freedoms. And we do, uh, comparatively speaking. I mean, working five days a week is not ideal, but it's certainly better than working 
seven days a week, 13 hours a day, sleeping on straw. Better than that. And people go, oh, but, but don't you feel sorry for them? If you feel sorry for them, then people will be less inclined to go after you. Uh, no. Your body is worth money. They crave money. They need it. So, sentimentality? Throw that shit out the fucking window. They do apprehend people, and people are never seen again. And they mask it as you know, maybe an accident. Maybe they just wandered off. Maybe they didn't want to come back. They mask it. In reality, it's more sinister than that. And you'll get authority figures on our side, you know, backing up their story. And it's just like, you're a fucking lying sack of shit because you're defending a policy that is inherently evil and uh, enables evil to, con to continue. Uh, the problem is there were thousands of white people at any given time in most of those Asian countries. And it's under the flimsiest of pretexts. Um, and the thing is, um, people speaking up, explaining in layman's terms, being a good person is not good enough when you go to these places. If they want to come after you, they will. I mean, it's the exact same thing if you go to a sketchy part of uh, downtown Vancouver or something like that. Don't matter if you're a good person. If they're hungry enough, they'll go after you. And this is fucking Canada. So, yeah, yeah just drop that shit right there. And, um, you know, I had heard of people going to Asian countries and they had their run-ins where people were you know thinking of mugging them or something like that or they really look sketchy or something like that and they were able to defend themselves I had to explain in plain fucking English if they wanted your stuff they would have got it these people that's what they do they they're criminals they think of ways of getting it and they would get it uh, and you, on the spree of a moment, thinking of a way out of it, that didn't happen. It was a put-up job. A little reminder. Because those people, they don't fuck up when they want your shit. They don't fuck up. And, uh, you know, if your organs are worth something, your, uh, whatever money you have on you is worth something, they're, they're a third world country, they'll fucking take it. And as I said, being a nice person, not good enough. Uh, and they do think white people are stupid because you, you get plenty of idiots that fucking go there. It's, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, a stupid monkey jumping off a boat uh, or something like that and not even thinking about it. It's like, yeah, they there are idiots that do those things. <laughs> and it's like, okay, then. Uh, you're not in charge of this ship, I'll tell you that much, with that kind of mentality. Uh, yeah, uh, and, you know, something that, in, it's an infuriating subject, and there is no good way of explaining it, but, uh, in Asian countries, they, there are Asian men that can go with white women. Uh, and people go, oh, you're a racist, you're a racist, what's wrong with interracial relationships? Uh, you don't understand the concept of what I'm talking about. Uh, Asia is not what you think it is. And uh, manufacturing consent, that uh, is part of it, but not the only thing. Uh, there are plenty of white people who are prostitutes. Uh, in Asia, everyone thinks that the slaves, the prostitutes, all those sorts, they're all Asian ethnicity. Uh, no, they're not. That would be bad for their own morale. They like seeing white people as prostitutes, slaves, and things like that. You gotta go to the real dirty parts, because, you know, they're not actually winning the war, but they're there, and you do have to feel pity upon them. And a caricature of them is this woman uh a jinx character although you know 
there are plenty male prostitutes over there too. Don't 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 even talk about that. But anyway, um, uh, the character is this Jinx character, right? Uh, and a good picture is um, from a YouTube channel called Jenny Music. Basically, she has pink eyes. Uh, blue hair, uh, you know, supposed to be a firecracker, go-getter, you know, that sort of personality and things like that. And, you know, I have seen depictions of this uh, caricature uh, where it is leaning towards it more being an Asian woman, and therefore they're in the same boat, because, you know, uh, many slaves is better than a few slaves, even if they're of a select kind. And, you know, on my internet search, I have never Googled uh, Jinx on any porn site. Never have. And I don't see it that often. Uh, but it does crop up. Uh, it hasn't recently, but uh, on Pornhub, it, it had cropped up a few times, um, you know, over the years. And uh, it's always a pathetic wretch. Well, usually a white woman and you know that it's, it's very sad uh, they live a sad existence uh, life is hard uh, and there's no way of winning and the promise the Asians have given they are, or certain Asian countries have given is that they'll make their lives a bit more comfortable put them in a little bit better of a place make them happy and that's you know that's manipulative propaganda to influence the minds of the governing body and on the flip side if we decide look this is a bad situation we need a Thanos mentality about it and deal with the problem now as opposed to What's common in uh, mainstream media is to deal with the problem later and allow the evil that's there to continue to manifest and potentially get worse. But anyway, as, as another character, uh, there's one episode of The Tick, uh, the original series from the 90s. Um, and there's an episode with the Mole Men hideous race of uh, underground dwellers and basically the lava monster is the villain in it although the episode is called tick versus the mole man and that was the one episode of the tick i absolutely despised it's not on the dvd collection i'm glad about that because i can't stand that episode i had to quickly watch it on youtube because I, I couldn't stand anything about it in the end, uh, the Mole King, uh, he, he brings back to his Mole Kingdom a woman from the television, a beautiful woman from the television, and to uh, be his Mole Queen. And, um, you know, that would quickly turn into a, a very bad scenario that's happened. Uh, in China, there's a thing called ant farms where there's thousands and thousands of people who live in buildings that uh, are so big that they start to go underground. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I, I, the, the very thought of a white person, regardless of who they are, uh, going to such a place is sickening to me. Absolutely fucking sickening. And who knows what depraved, horrible things happen to them there. And let's remember, they do have a dark underworld under, over there. That's there's, there's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you get denials from people. You get people going, where are your links? Where's your sources? And things like that. And you go, use your fucking mind. Figure it out for yourself. Look past the lies and figure it out for yourself. Maybe not 100% right about everything, but, you know, I got a, a fairly accurate idea of what's, what, what's the skinny. And... You know, uh, poverty-stricken countries, uh, 
when resorted to desperation, use dirty tactics. And that's something that, you know, I don't put past them. Of course, this sort of information can't be spread around or is that a <laughs> tourism industry, you know, that's it. It finish it, which it should do. Um, because, um, you know, it would put the people that are already there in a real awkward situation if the money flow stopped coming in. And realistically, there's nothing that comes out of Asia that we really need. We can make our own clothes. We don't need iPhones. Um, and that's essentially it. Uh, slave labor is their advantage. And I mean, you know, obviously mod some modern conveniences wouldn't be there. And they actually are gifted uh, in technological advances. Not because they're smarter, but because they got more people working on it, and not only working on it, but basically you do the job or you, <laughs> you get taken out back and you're found in a dumpster uh, with your feet sticking out. Um, essentially, if you fuck up, you don't get the job done, you don't succeed. And uh, yeah, that's how they're able to influence, uh, inspire their uh scientists to do better we we in the west don't have that kind of pressure and we don't like doing that to our citizens actually um it's not necessary and it seems primitive and barbaric but again asia's third world country they're all third world countries and uh, even japan supposed to be technologically advanced and it is in some places but in some places it's a rat's nest and uh, there are a lot of policies that uh, language isn't described but it shows things and uh, one such documentary I watched uh, just last night actually is called Haikaiko Mori uh, H I K I K O M O R I. Uh, it was done by RT, and it's basically what causes young Japanese hermits to give up on real life. And these people, uh, one of the fellows they they interviewed, had never left his room. Decided, you know, he wasn't going to work, wasn't going to go to school, wasn't going to do anything but play video games. And uh, so obviously he was a burden to his parents and all that. And uh, they had him heavily medicated. He was on so many medications and things like that. Essentially, they convinced him that uh, the world around him was a bad thing and that he wanted to stay at home and for him to take medication. He's probably in chronic pain, although he never mentioned that. And I go, hold on a second. Where am I right now? I'm in my room. I have to take a bunch of medications I don't want to take, and it hurts. But am I some little wuss who can't go out into the world? Uh, no. As I said, I didn't have that exciting a uh, New Year's. Kind of a bummer, but, you know, it was one of them things. I'll get back at him for that. I'll have my day. You watch. And, um... You know, they seem content with not really living life. And that's a concept that I, I would never accept, regardless of my situation. My sore neck's going to go away. And as soon as it does, fuck you, I'm going out into the real world. Uh, and nobody is intelligent enough to convince me otherwise. They can make it difficult for me, and they will. But they'll never be able to convince me otherwise. They're just not smart enough. And there's no good way of explaining this shitty situation. And I don't mean going to a shitty part of the world where that kind of stuff is normal. Uh, I don't think it happens nearly as often in Canada as Hikokomori or whatever the fuck it's called. But it happens here too. And people in the Western world don't understand it. And... Um, they don't care because, again, head down, mind your own business, don't do anything for anyone else, and, you know, they're only in it to, you know, 
benefit their own their own well-being and that typical whiny canadian attitude fuck you if i didn't already say that one more time fuck you um part of the problem you're enabling it and um yeah i highly recommend you watch that little documentary because uh that's sad truly sad that uh, people can end up in that situation and they're not bad people a lot of the times they're uh, through certain circumstances they are selected for psychological profiling and with today's technology uh, and all that sort of stuff it is not hard to keep tabs on anybody you're walking around with a smartphone that uh, pings your fucking uh, location at any given time can audio record you all those people have smartphones you can't get away from a smartphone these days uh, most of them are recluses and are afraid of their own shadow uh, and those medications oh, man they can make you feel anything they want you to and it's always a bad thing believe me it is uh, the stuff it's all shit um uh, so they don't make youtube videos like i do because they don't have the courage they don't want to say anything controversial or anything like that they want to play their video games uh that's essentially the most part what they do and that's how they want to live their lives and it's like if i'm trapped in this room because of my physical impediments and my social impediments that um, are more of um, uh, a mechanism to prevent me from going anywhere, or doing anything, or saying anything, then, you know, um, I don't think I'm the problem. Um, but these people are content with where they are. I am not. And... Uh, I have opened the door to, you know, ridicule, uh, embarrassment, and the problem is, it's very easy with video footage, photography it's easier, but with video footage to do anything, they can, you know, with Snapchat, that's, you know, common western one, uh, they could put girl's hair on me, change my voice, uh, put I don't know, ponies behind me or something, anything. And you will get so many idiots out there that go, oh, they're going to be did that on purpose. You know, audio record my voice to say something else. <laughs> and it's like, um, if you're that stupid, it doesn't matter what you think because you're a fucking idiot. And it, it, these these Asian people, particularly in Japan, uh, they know this and are too scared. And, you know, I had heard, you know, off in the distance this sort of thing. So maybe I had time to go, I don't give a damn. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And they had the negative stuff put right in front of their face right at the very beginning. And uh, it traumatized them. They're obviously traumatized. Me, I'm not traumatized. Uh, at least I like to think I'm not, but perhaps I am in some ways. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out about that. Uh, there was another documentary I watched talking about man boo. Not man boobs, man boo. And man boo is basically a housing structure uh in asia and the documentary i saw of it trust me they don't all look like that essentially it's cheap horror housing and basically it's like a cubicle without a ceiling and you got a computer and you sleep on the floor uh that we would call uh extremely low income housing you like you, you don't have enough room to do anything and they didn't mention it, but yeah, get, they segregate the men and women because um, 
Well, I mean, there is reason for that, but uh, it would essentially, you know, turn into like, uh, you know, a, a bad situation uh, if the men and the women were in the same place. I mean, I guess that part of it is reasonable, but there is probably very limited social interaction. Well, they say so, limited social interaction, but they fail to mention that a social minimal social interaction with men and women. And I suppose there's, you know, an eating area and things like that. And these people want to be reclusive. Uh, and somehow they make money on the computer. Uh, there are ways to make money on the computer uh, and not, you know, selling stuff like uh, how I would do it, but, you know, like actual computer work. And, um, you know, that wouldn't be my way of life. No, not a chance. And that way of life is not coming here. There are a lot of Asians that, you know, they, they, they want their way of life to come here because they want it to feel like home, but they want it to be better than home. And it's like, you want man booze? You want bright, colorful lights and weird hente fucking anime monstrosity cartoons on television and in the public domain on, you know, regular streets and things like that and stuff. Uh, but you want a little more money poured into it. So it's not, you know, so creepy looking like it is in Asia. I'm sorry, but it's not happening. No, I'm not sorry. I don't give a damn. And uh, these are all important things. I, at the beginning of this video, I said, look, there are a lot of concepts I have to explain and a lot of um, theories and a lot of stuff that I can't exactly prove. But through deductive reasoning, you can figure some of this shit out. And the world, it has a pathetic mask on it, masquerading as civilized. We don't live in a civilized world. Here in Canada, first world country, not civilized at all. You look at the people in power, they're fucking nuts, all of them. Justin Trudeau, supposed to be a big nice guy. Selling weapons to the Saudis to kill Yemenis. Fuck you. He's not a nice guy. Doesn't matter if he puts on a pleasant face on the television and you don't hear him talking uh, much about arms deals to the Saudis. Doesn't matter. He's doing that. Fuck you. And, um, you know, as a prime minister, of course, he has to make difficult decisions. But he doesn't have to be a sanctimonious twat about it. He could... I could see the, you know, he wants people to feel calm, at ease, like sheep who don't know what the fuck's going on, and don't know that the shepherd's going to lead him off a cliff. They don't know that. And uh, I would rather know. I'd rather know. Uh, of course, there are a lot of things I don't want to see, but, um, you know, uh, we're not having a zombieville from Asia fucking come in here and fucking overwhelming us and I don't care if you are an Asian you have to see your own fault since I've been alive it's always been demonizing the white man every opportunity and then when George Bush came along and Barack Obama the black man came to save the day oh black man coming to save the day oh fucking shut up and and then the white man he swindled everybody by taking power again and it's like in the form of donald trump and it's like shut up these people can't even run their own fucking country their, their leaders can't run their own country where the fuck do they get off telling us that we can't run our country the way we want to we don't do the fucking things they do and body snatching and fucking slave trade, all that shit is real in Asia. And anyone who perpetuates the idea of going, surf's up, dude. The beaches, man. Look at the view in the crystal clear water. Why is it crystal clear? Because uh, 10 years ago, they poured a bunch of shit in it. They fucking killed everything in it. Oh, okay. That makes me feel better. But look how good their food tastes, man. Well, what's in it? Oh, nothing. A little bit of LSD. 
or something. Uh, because uh, their food is disgusting. It is disgusting. And everyone goes, oh, but what about Western food? It's all made by Monsanto, yo. Uh, well, what else do you know about Monsanto? Oh, they made Agent Orange. What else do you know about Monsanto? They, uh, uh, Michael Moore said something bad about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Um. Oh Christ! What a fucking mess the world is. Somebody's got to fucking set things right. And uh, you know Tom Hardy and the whole Venom thing, and how he's the anti-hero and things like that. Um, uh, some parts of that movie kind of made sense. We don't need more sanctimonious heroes that turn a blind eye to evil and pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, we don't need more Captain Americas. Captain America was a fucking wanker. Yeah, this is such a difficult con uh, conversation to have, especially with no one responding. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm used to. It's like I live in a mental asylum that's outdoors. Uh, you know, every once in a while, somebody may poke one of my social medias and say something. But it won't be anyone I actually know. At least I don't think so, anyway. I wouldn't know. No one's allowed to talk to me about it. If I have to live the life of somebody who, um isn't it involved Harry Sullivan and things like that and has limited conversation because involuntary celibacy um, genuinely means no contact with women, no physical contact with women. And for the most part, especially with me, it means no conversations with women either. I rarely get conversations with women. Um, it also means no regular conversation with anybody about anything and make no mistake i have uh you know it it, it is voluntary celibate when uh talking to men I, I did no no uh yeah uh however women those i wouldn't i wouldn't mind touching some women that would be nice uh and that's not perverted at all uh you know some nice hot chick with like you know, a good figure, good breasts, nice hair, nice face, um, yeah, friendly personality. Um, I don't want them to come out of the gate and you know they're lying right away uh, about their stance, about who they are, about what they're doing. And that's the typical thing about a bureaucrat is, uh, and that's the kind of chicks that really like me, which is why there's so much red tape around. And why, you know, things are more, way more difficult than they should be. Uh, is that you know that they're liars. And they have the ability to lie without remorse. And the thing is, actually, I have the ability to crack their programming in their head through uh, my linguistic skills. I have done it before. Uh, with bureaucrats and it's just like they, they, they like no matter how well they're trained and if they're trained too well then obviously uh it's gonna show and it's gonna be like i'll never be able to trust them uh there'll always be something dirty underhanded sneaky about them there'll always be people out there that'll back them up in secret and cause me grief even though i don't think i deserve it i don't and in the future i'm not going to deserve it either uh, but they'll do that anyway because of obscure esoteric reasons. Uh, like, believe it or not, there are actually women that actually are jealous of other women that like me. And I've never even met either of them. Or either party, I should say. And it's like, the fuck is wrong here, man? The fuck is wrong? That makes no fucking sense. But it is a thing. It's a fucking thing. And this is all interconnected because of multiculturalism. So people go, 
well, gee whiz, we've explained everything about multiculturalism and how good it is for, to people. Why isn't this thick numbskull with a bad haircut, why doesn't he understand it? Uh, I do understand it. Not from your perspective, though. You know, to some people you're right, but not to me. And it is this whole philosophy of multiculturalism and today's society, which is a big part of the reason why people go, it doesn't matter that this one person isn't living life to the fullest. It doesn't matter because of all the other people who live shitty lives uh, because of whatever reasons. It doesn't matter what happens to this guy. And people of power turn a blind eye because they go, well, we got examples of white people in mental asylums in Asia where they're really getting it hard simply for being white. And uh, they're unable to break free. However, uh, me, I don't know, maybe, uh, I, it, maybe it is true. Uh, as soon as I get a, a taste of what real life is about, you know, I mean, I, I, I do the best I can here, but perhaps it'd be like Sauron in the TAS X-Men series, where, you know, he turns into a reptile and he becomes a, a you know, a flying reptile and, you know, a, a pterosaur, exactly. And um, he's like, free again. And uh, he's able to, you know, exercise his, his power, his authority. Nah, I wouldn't be like that, but, you know, uh, I do feel like I'm being confined, and it's by artificial means, and it's for corrupt reasons. Um, and there's another video I'd like to make about a corrupt bureaucratic thing that I can see going on, and a lot of people deny that it's happening, but I can see it. And it has nothing to do with this video, where I've jumped from subtopic to subtopic to explain a bigger picture but uh, yeah getting back to that Jinx character all I can think about is uh, yeah the predator um, where he's where um, Billy Duke is like those eyes they just disappeared and, you know, the take episode with the woman who went into the subterranean underground with the mole people. And, you know, it's infuriating. It's a sad subject. And it's like, uh, you know, some people go, well, in your position, you shouldn't talk about stuff like that. But, you know, I, I, I'm going to push the envelope anyway. Uh, there's no sense of backing out now. Uh, you know, you, you got to figure this shit out, and from my perspective, figure out the problem, try to resolve it. And it is a real one. It is. There are slaves out there uh, of all sorts, and they want to bring that philosophy here. Of course they do. They don't want to be known as the um, subservience uh, to the white man, uh, and to do that, they have to make the white man subservience in their own country. I mean, the white man did that for many years in Asia. And uh, they want to do it here. And our government may allow them to do that. And maybe there are a lot of people who go head down, do your thing, keep your mouth shut, yada, yada, yada. Uh, well, what I got to say about that is you bought a ticket to the front lines, you fucking worthless wanker. You got nothing. Uh, as far as Canadian civ uh, civilization is, you are nothing compared to the soldiers that fought in World War II and World War I. Uh, I don't blame you for being a coward, but that does mean you're going to the front fucking lines for enabling this problem. The Jason Unruh's out there masking the problems. Front fucking lines. And, uh, you know, that means I'm going to have enemies, but I was going to have enemies anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, this video has gone on for nearly an hour. Uh, I wish I could have just focused on one subtopic. 
and you know maybe I'll make these videos again in the future and just focus on each subtopic before grasping the you know the whole picture uh, but there was some things that had to be mentioned you know it uh it there's a lot of phil philosophical um difficulties that uh um people are gonna have people are gonna have strong opinions about the world and um you know it's not easy to explain and it's certainly not easy to do in such a way where it won't piss people off and some people are gonna go right i hate this guy's opinion so much i hope he has a sore throat for every day for the next 60 years wouldn't work for me don't like that idea I mean, I can't believe I'm still dealing with parts of it. It's not as bad as it was before, but uh, still parts of it. Uh, two years after uh, injection depots of psychiatric medication that caused it in the first place. Two fucking years. You got guys that can't fucking handle a splinter for 10 minutes. Jesus fucking Christ. What I got to put up with? With these fucking cocksucker bureaucratic Canadian assholes, sellouts, deceivers, liars, cheaters. But anyway, none of that matters because I'll figure this out and I'll fuck them over later. Anyway, I got other things to do, so I'll. Talk to you people later.